Hey guys, it's Carla. Today I'm going to paint this uh, wheat field with a sunset. I'm using an 8x10 canvas panel and acrylic paint. This is raw sienna, chrome yellow, white, burnt sienna, phthalo blue, and black. All right, I'm going to start with my sky and I'm going to start right here around my sun so that um, I don't want to paint over you know I want to leave my canvas as white as possible so that when I put the white sun in there it's really bright okay I'm going to start with a synthetic um, angle brush get it wet and um you could actually use a flat brush. You could use um, just about any brush for this sky, um, but whatever you're comfortable blending with because we've got to blend that yellow into the light blue. All right, so I'm going to start with my yellow and just go right around where my... Um, sun is going to be and I'll go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and draw in my horizon line just so that I know where to paint and this doesn't have to be straight what you don't want is for it to be like halfway up the canvas you want to kind of offset it a little bit so that it's not so uh, symmetrical all right, now I'm gonna paint right around my sun. Okay, so I want my sun to be about, about right here. And I don't want that to be a hard line so I'm um, kind of fuzz that out with my finger okay so now right around the Sun is a bright yellow and then as it comes out it's more of a kind of a dirty yellow so I'm going to pick up some of that raw sienna Now when I get um, when I get over here to my sun, I want it to be I want it to gradually blend into it. So once I've got most of the paint off my brush, I'm gonna come back and just kind of lightly go over this and blend it together. And I also want it to blend up here um, because if I create a hard line up here I'm gonna really regret it after a while when I go to put my blue in so I want to make sure I have a very soft gradation Sometimes it helps to just wet your brush. So that it kind of thins the paint down and it gets it's able to get down into that the tooth of the canvas. Okay, now I want this color to go all the way across. And then I just want it to blend up into the sky.
Okay, now I've cleaned my brush and I'm gonna start on my sky. And what I'm gonna do is start up here at the darker part of the sky and work, work my way down into this yellow. So I'm gonna pick up some blue, white, Okay, so I'm going to start up here. I'm still trying to avoid hard lines. Um, hard lines are just sometimes impossible to cover in acrylic paint. All right, so now I'm gonna pick up just plain white and start putting in this lighter blue. some water because I'm getting this dry canvas so I need to um, thin it down to, to where it will seep down into those grooves Okay, so I rinsed my brush and now I've got this sudden change in color here and I want it to be uh, more gradual. So I'm gonna pick up some white, pick up some water. And my brush is gonna go uh, halfway into the blue and halfway into the yellow. And that's where I wanna start blending is. Now up here, I'm not real concerned. I mean, I want it to be kind of blended, but I'm gonna have clouds up there, so I'm not real concerned about that. Uh, but I am about this down here um, in the yellow. So I'm gonna pick up some more of that color and blend it up into the white. Sometimes you just gotta play back and forth with it until 
until you get the blend that you want. It's, it's not always going to happen right away. Okay, now before I work on my clouds, I'm going to let this sky um, dry, and I'm going to I'm going to use a smaller angle brush and go ahead and put in my sun because right now this is raw canvas, and I need it to be white paint. So I want to make sure that all of that is filled in, and I also want to, once I get it all filled in while it's still wet, I want to take my finger and go out so that it creates this kind of a haze. I want it brighter right around the sun. I can come back with some yellow. And then again, just blend it. Okay, now, if we need to after a while, we can always come back with some more white and brighten that up. We'll just see what it looks like when it dries. Um, but now I'm gonna work on this ground with my larger angle brush. And what I want to do down here is just to fill it in with a base color. And I want that base color to be like a kind of a dark forest green. So I'm going to pick up some uh, yellow, some blue, some burnt sienna. That's just going to kind of warm it up a little bit. And a touch of black. Just want a nice dark green. And now I'm just going to fill all of this in down here. Okay, now while this dries, I'm going to use my mop brush and start laying in my clouds. Now, with clouds, you can dab it in with the mop brush. You can, um, if you want these little, like, kind of striated clouds, you can sweep it in like that. Um, you can kind of do, like, wispy, kind of circular motions. So, it... It depends on what kind of clouds you want in your sky. But the mop brush allows you to, uh, to do all of that, just whatever kind you want.
kind of create your own sky. Don't um, on these clouds. Don't try to follow any kind of reference photo because you know after this uh, photo was taken, as soon as it was taken, the clouds changed. So you know clouds are always changing and. So they're never going to be the same for two, two people. This is a good time too if you um, have a if you have if you weren't able to blend real well with your your yellow and your blue you can kind of use the clouds as a transition and cover that up. Okay, now back here um, in the distance, you're kind of seeing, um, you really can't tell what's going on there, but there's like weeds and um, there's even a tree over here. Those may be distant trees back there, I don't know. Um, but it doesn't matter what they are, we're going to put them in and they're kind of um, kind of an orangish color sort of and I'm going to use just a long just a flat brush um, a small flat brush to get those that kind of blurry um, effect back there so I'm going to pick up some of this raw sienna some of the burnt sienna. Now because this is in the distance, I want it to stay blurry. And I'll come back and put the dark in this, but right now I just want this um, reddish color that's being created by the sunlight and I want it to stay blurry so don't want too much detail in it
And it's also casting a little orange shade right here on the ground. The sun is. And I see some of this over here. Like I said, you can't tell what it is, but it just adds interest to it. You can just tell that there's something going on back there. When you put this on there, before it dries, make sure that you blur out the, the edges so that um, nothing is defined. Okay, and now I can come back with, um, I'll use that same shade but I'm going to put a little bit of black with it and put in that darker area that you see in these little blobs it's kind of like I mean these are trees I guess or something but it's kind of like they've got an orange glow around them So with this darker color, I'm not coming all the way to the edge of this orange. I'm leaving I'm leaving that glow around it. And I see quite a bit of black, or not black, but really dark color back here in the ground. And it's just kind of, I'm just scumbling it in because it's, it's not really shaped like anything. It's just, it's just little dark areas. Okay, now there's also, there's this tree back here, and I'm going to make kind of a greenish color for that, but I want it to be a dark green, so I'm going to put some black in with it. some of my sky showing through uh, like peeking through the like little holes in the tree
And again, I don't want this defined. I, I want to kind of blur out the edges because it's in the distance. Okay, and then I want to come back with some almost black. Just add some black to that green color. And just like we did down here, I want to add some darker shade in the middle of all that blur. But I don't want to go all the way out to the edge because I want to keep that fuzzy look. Okay, now before before I work on my um, wheat up front, there's some things going on back here. We don't know what it is, but it's certainly not just this plain green color. So we want to put some um, some weeds and I guess maybe that's wheat back there. Um, Anyway, we want to put some different, some varieties of shapes and colors going on behind this wheat that we're going to have in the front. So I'm going to use my little angle brush and I just want to use different shades back there. Some lighter, some darker. And I'm going to hold my brush way back here so that I can get some really odd shapes and and not think about it too much. So I'm just kind of turning my brush as I go and um, just kind of touching it down in places. And I'm going to do this with with this lighter shade and with different different colors and shades. So like now I'm going to pick up some of that burnt sienna. Maybe some of this almost black, this really dark green we had. We're just trying to create some interest back here so that it's not just a solid color. And yours is not going to look like mine. This is just very random. It's very um, kind of haphazard. And now, uh, here's the reason that I'm using the, the angle brush. Because some of it's just scumbling, but some of it is like actual... Um, almost, I guess, you know, weeds, but nothing defined. So I'm using the skinny part of the brush to, to make this. But then, you know, be careful doing this because, like I said, you don't want anything too defined back there. You want this to, to be very soft and blurry.
Okay, I'm going to make some lighter green. Now up here, up front, I'm going to use mostly black, I mean mostly this dark color, this dark green, because when I put my wheat in, I want it to really pop against that background. Okay, now back here I want the ground to be a little bit glowier, I guess, if that's a word. Okay. Now with my angle brush, I'm going to put in some of my, a little more distant wheat um, stalks. And because it's in the distance, it's not going to be as defined and it's not going to be as dark. So I want, um, I want maybe a... Maybe kind of a dull green. And I want to kind of water it down a little bit. Because I don't want these to, to be extremely obvious. So I'm going to use the um, skinny part of my angle brush. And just put in some of these distant grasses or weeds or whatever they are. They're not like distant like back there at the horizon. They're just right behind these front ones. So they're not the, the main focus.
Okay. Now, it's important to know that when you when you're working against a light background, things are going to appear darker, and when you're working against a dark background, they'll appear lighter. So, with that in mind, I'm going to mix up kind of a a light weed color. And this is still going to be more distant, so I want to keep it light and keep it watered down and not have it very defined. These will all make more sense when I get everything else in. Okay, now, um, there's some little seed pods on some of these. So I'm going to use the um, corner of my angle brush and just kind of dot in some some little seed pods and then dab it with my finger because again I want to keep I want to keep this in the distance. Okay, now some of these darker weeds back here also have some seed pods on some of them. Okay, now we're going to work on our wheat, our main focus. And I'm going to mix up just a dark color. It really, I'm just picking up all different colors and then add black to it. Just about any dark color will work. Okay, so I'm using my angle brush and I'm picking up some water because I want this to be, I want the paint to be kind of thin in order to get these 
um, thin lines. Okay, so I'm going to use the the skinny part of my brush and start at the bottom of the canvas. I'm barely touching it. And I'm going to bring it all the way up like that. These are my main wheat stalks. I've got some that come all the way off the canvas. Now these, these that don't come up into the sky are going to be hard to see right now, but we will be highlighting them. Okay, now if you have an angle brush that is small enough to be the size of these little seed pods, then that's what you'll want to use. Um, or you could use a flat brush, a small flat brush like that. And remember I told you that when, when you're working on a light background, things appear darker. So from here up, I'm going to use this, this dark color. But down here, I'll be using a lighter shade. Okay, so to form these little seed pods, I'm just going to use the shape of my brush. And I'm going to put it at an angle and just touch down on either side of that stalk. I'm just letting the brush do the work. It's, it's, it's the right shape, so I'm just touching it down. Okay, so you can see close up that it's it's just the shape of this brush. Okay, now I've got my dark ones in from the horizon up, and now I want to put these in, and they're going to be lighter. This is just kind of a, I think this is the raw sienna, white, maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna. You just, we just want a light, kind of a sandy, light sandy color. And we're going to do it the same way we did those, but these are just going to be down here at the horizon.
All right. Now I've got my highlight color in there. That's the gl the the glow from the sunlight. It's glowing through that wheat. Uh, but just like we did back here, where we got these glows around these trees, we got to come back now with the dark in the center. So I don't want to cover up all this glow. I want to leave leave the outside of it and just put this dark in the center using the same tapping technique using the shape of your um, brush. Okay, now I've got that, um, I've got that kind of sunlit glow. I want to come back and kind of sharpen up some of these a little bit because they are my main focus. They're the focal points, so it, they need to be very defined. And I feel like some of them are a little bit blurry. And that may be where I had it, uh, the paint too, maybe too watered down because when you water it down, it gets more transparent. But I want these to be very bold. And another thing I noticed is that um, that this this glow down here around the wheat is too um, light, like too white for my liking. So what I'm going to do is mix up a. this raw sienna and actually I could I could just turn that into a glaze add some water to it just turn it into a glaze and yeah that'll work um, if you got the color you want to begin with then don't worry about this step, but this will give me that warmer glow that I want. It's really easy using a glaze. It's easy to kind of change the flavor of you're painting once the once the paint is dry. You can glaze over it with either a lighter or darker shade, and um, change it. You, if you add, if I added white to this, this wouldn't work because white is very opaque, and it would end up covering up my. Um, color completely, but with just adding water to this raw sienna, I can get, I can allow my, that light color that I put on there to show through. Yeah, I like this, this color a lot better for this painting because it's this is a very warm sunset kind of painting so i think this raw sienna looks good with it it's starting to 
Taking it. All right, guys, there you have it. That's our wheat field with the sunset. Um, if you like this plant painting, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that. All that helps me out, if you don't mind. And um, if you'll hit that bell, it will alert you, notify you when I get, when I upload new videos so you can, so you don't miss anything. So, Give this a try, and until next time, happy painting. Bye, guys.